Hi, I'm Jay, and I'm a woodturner. <laughs> Thank you. These clubs help a lot, don't they? I, uh, who, who saw my demo yesterday? How many people? A few, a few of you? OK, I can use the same jokes, right? <laughs> OK. All right, uh, I'm Jay Shepard. I live in Olympia. I uh, have been. Uh, I discovered wood turning. I, I have a Master of Fine Arts degree in painting uh, that I got multiple years ago and uh, decided I needed a job to pay for, pay for my habits. So I went to work for the state and worked for the state for 32 years. And, uh, and over that time, I took up wood, uh, woodworking. I built a, a few houses and built some furniture, and one day I, I built a, made a tabletop. And I thought, the tabletop needs round legs. It doesn't need square legs, like at my table saw. So you've probably heard this story if, you're, if you've seen me or read about it. But I, I went and bought a 1939 vintage uh, Delta lathe. It was really cool, not used much at all. And uh, turned those legs and I didn't finish the table, and I've been turning ever since. So it was really a lot of fun. And uh, so, which has brought me here today. Um, oh, my phone's vibrating. Yeah, hello. Yeah, hi. Yeah, uh, how big is it? It's three foot at the stump. Yeah, and it's all fiddled back for, for, uh, for 20 feet, huh? Yeah, yeah, I'd be really interested. I've got, I've, got a, I've got a Subaru with a roof rack. We can, you've got a loader? We can just put it right on the car. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll be done at, uh, I can be back home at about uh, 10, 30, 11, and we can load it up then, right? Okay, good, thanks. Is that a wood turner? <laughs> yep, so that's why these clubs help. <laughs> um, I'm a member of the Olympia Wood Turning Club, and, uh, and September 21st, we're going to have Graham Priddle down for a uh, symposium, so reserve your, your time and space. We don't quite have it up, uh, the registration ready yet, uh, system ready yet, but uh, be ready for that. It'll be a day-long symposium with Graham, plus uh, workshops the following week. It's kind of noisy in here, isn't it? <laughs> so um, there's one thing I want to tell you about, and... Can you put uh, this little uh, plate here is, is maple. It's got an inlay of uh, selenite. And I'm going to, this will be my last part, or one of my last demos this afternoon or evening. Um, I'll, be buffing, I'll be buffing this out. Um, I often sand it and give you a demonstration on sanding, but uh, in the interest of time, I'm not going to do that. I'll just talk about the sanding process I use. This is a lacquer finish. And after it's done and buffed, I'm going to give it away to some lucky person who buys a wrap. So uh, what I'd like to do is pass these tickets around with a basket and pay a bucket ticket and uh, be generous because I'm going to give this money to your club and uh, to help, help with your expenses. So again, it'll be this, this particular piece, okay? Uh, buy 10 or 12 tickets, that'll be good. A piece, okay. So I'm going to talk to you tonight. Can I have the computer up? Uh, about my finishing. Uh, people come up to me often and say, Jay, those are the best finishes I've ever seen. How do you do that? Well, I'm going to tell you about that tonight. This piece is right over there, or that last one was right over there. It's called Enceladus. It's about the moon around Saturn. Um, this is a trio of, of jars that I made. Uh, unfortunately, they're not together anymore. One's in Iowa and one's in... in, in uh, Great Britain. Uh, this one's called uh, Islands in the Sky. It's a wall hanging uh, platter. 
airbrush underneath and, and lacquer finish on top. I did a series of pieces I called Comet. Uh, they're hollow forms, similar to this piece here. Uh, and so that's kind of what I do. These pieces are also uh, what I do. Besides the lacquer finish, I also do um, a wax oil uh, finish that I'll demonstrate tonight as well. So back to, back to the, uh, yeah, okay. So I'm going to talk to you about finishing, buffing, and more. I'm going to give you a quick overview of what I'm going to talk about, and then I'll talk about it, and then we'll talk. So uh, the key to a good finish is surface preparation. Surface preparation and a good buff at the end and everything in between. So we're going to talk about the fact that you always want to strive for a really good cut. But some of us have shaky hands, and that doesn't always happen. But <laughs> um, what you want to do is indeed, how many new turners do we have here? Are relatively new? OK. I'll talk about it real quickly. Uh, here's a little demo piece I've written down the different tools I've used to, uh, to make on this. Here is a very sharp uh, bowl gouge. Right here is a sure scrape with a bowl gouge. Here is a dull bowl, ga bowl gouge. The next is a bedan scraper. And the end is a skew. And you'll see that the sharp bowl gouge and the skew give you the, the best finish. I'll pass this around, and you can uh, feel it. And you can feel the difference between the different tools, OK? Now, what's the key to a good cut? Sharp edge. For me, it's speed. I turn it up as fast as I can. <laughs> you know, I go up and around the 2,000 plus mark. Uh, and writing the bevel. Now, when you're uh, you new guys, you, uh, writing the bevel is kind of a, you hear that a lot, but nobody ever really explains it to you, so I'm going to go over it to you, and you guys that know about it, either you can correct me or you can uh, take a break. <laughs> but uh, so here's the edge of your, your vessel, and here's your gouge going into it. And uh, get my D-Way Tools uh, bowl gouge out here. Shameless advertisement. Guys that uh, are new, go ahead and buy these. They're great tools. It's, you know, when you're first start and you think, I, can't, I, ought, to, I ought to not spend too much, and you go with the Benjamin's Best or the, uh, or the uh, Fre Harbor Freight, and then you end up buying this one anyway. So go ahead and buy this one first, and it'll save you money in the long run. Uh, these hold their edge really well and, and sharpen really well. So uh, I told Jimmy I'd say that. <laughs> so, this is the bevel, this beveled edge. And then you have your, your, your cut edge there. So you're, you're cutting right here as you go into your uh, piece of wood. If you lift this up and don't ride the bevel, you'll be cutting like that. And what's going to happen is you very likely will get a catch and a very deep gouge in your turn. And if you run on the heel of your gouge, you're not going to get a cut at all. So run it so your, your bevel, front to back, is riding on your piece of wood. OK? Does it make sense? And then, as that goes through, you're cutting with this end, and the heel is doing a kind of a burnish. And you'll see that on the part of the, the piece that I just passed around. So a good cut is really important, but guess what? It doesn't always happen. <laughs> uh, and me, for instance, I kind of shake a little bit. So I'll put a little groove um, in my piece. That needs to be sanded out. So we're going to talk about 
sanding. Okay, back to the computer, please. Oops. Oh, okay. And then, okay, we're going to talk about, oh my, this went back up. Okay, we'll work, we'll work with it. Um, surface preparation, good, good cut. Sanding, we're going to talk about sealing. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the finishing choices. I just lost it entirely. Okay. We're going to, okay, there we go. We're going to talk about the finishing choices of just a straight buff on wood, uh, oil and wax finish, and a water-based lacquer. And real quickly, this is my rationale for why I am an advocate for water-based lacquer. Uh, the quality competes with spirit-based finishes. Um, it's easy cleanup, it's very low odor, it dries very fast and quick, and it cures quickly, and it's, it's very safe, uh, as opposed to spirit-based lacquers. I use this product, it's called Hydrocoat. I'll pass this around for you to look at it, if you want, the can. It's empty. Uh, it's from a company called Hood Finishes. They're in New Jersey. They don't have an outlet here. You have to mail order it. Uh, but it's very high quality. Fine Woodworking did a test of water-based finishes, and this one rated as their best, their, uh, best buy. It competes with the General, which got their best overall. They're the same quality. General costs twice as much. So, um, so I mentioned it's safe, and I, this is really, we talk a lot about safety in these clubs, but we don't talk about safety of the materials we use very much. And so I'm going to go over this with you. A lot of you may use the rattle cans, the deft rattle cans. Um, this is the hazard ranking uh, done on the uh, material safety data sheets. And you'll see that the health rating for deft is moderate. The flammabil flammability is very serious. The reactivity is minimal. But you need your protective, uh, your personal protection includes vapor respirator, gloves, and glasses. So you need the full-on vapor respirator, not one of these paper masks, OK? Uh, for CA glue, the health risk is the same, moderate. Um, the flammability is lower. It's got a slight reactivity. And um, the protection, you need ventilation, plus the vapor uh, respirator, OK? It's really not too good for you either. But over here on the hydrocoat, the water base, it's only a slight health risk, and I'll talk about that. No flammability and no reactivity. The health risk is that when you get it on your skin, it, it kind of dries, so it chaps. So wear rubber gloves in your And that's what it says here. Gloves, they want you to wear glasses for everything. <laughs> so. Um, and back on the MSDS sheet uh, for uh, deft, right here caught my attention when I read it, uh, this bottom part. Uh, exposure may cause loss of coordination, confusion, slowed heart rate, affect the liver, spleen, respiratory depression, lung edema, et cetera, et cetera, down the bottom. Exposure to concentrated vapors may cause heart arrhythmias, especially those with pre-existing heart conditions. Pre-existing liver condition disease may be aggravated. Anybody in here have any of those? What? <laughs> yeah. So, if you use that, be aware that you're you're causing more stress on you. The water base is safer for you. Okay. End of lecture. Yes. Uh, so spray lacquer finish, I'm going to talk about how I, do, how I do it anyway. We're going to uh, set up the spray gun. We're going to spray. How I do it is I spray, I inspect, I sand, and then I repeat if I need to. Um, I put about 12 to 20 coats on a piece. Now, that sounds like a lot, but it doesn't take much time at all. Um, and then I buff, inspect, and if I sand it again, I go back. If I need to shoot it again, I do. Uh, and then I finish. We'll talk about the anatomy of the spray gun really quickly. For finishing dust 
collection is a big issue. Well, for in your shop, dust collection is a big issue, right? Uh, I've got a fan on my wall that ducks out to the outside of my shop, right next to my lathe. But in the wintertime, it's really cold to run that thing. I've got the uh, uh, overhead dust collector. I've got this little guy, and I've got that big guy. And I still have dust all over my shop. It's really tough. So um, let's talk about safety uh, in relation to sanding. I, this guy, when I'm really doing heavy-duty sanding, and it's uh, the trend, it's uh, got a fan inside, it blows fresh air in there. And, it's, and it seals around my face. It does a nice job, but it's very expensive. You can get this little number uh, on Amazon, and it's got a filter inside that's replaceable. So, and it wraps around your face it, like, sorry, I have to take the hat off. <laughs> wraps around your face like this, and it's got a uh, thing on your nose, and it fits really nicely and tightly. This is a really good mask, and it does do dust really well. Um, oh, go to Amazon and search for dust mask, and it'll show up in the, in the search. Now, back last year when we had the fires and they were telling you to wear a dust mask, this is the number they told you to wear. This will work too for dust, for, excuse me, for the, the dust, uh, the, the particulate matter in the air, this N95. It's a decent disposable mask and it'll work for dust. These little paper ones, forget about it. Don't waste your money, get something better. You're gonna hear that from me a lot is don't waste your money you know, you're going to be wasting your money if you buy the cheap thing in the first place. So go ahead and invest. It'll last you longer. Okay. Do I have any more slides? Dust collection. That's it. Okay. So, real quickly, I've got a cheat sheet for you here that will pass out. And I think I made enough of them for everybody. Uh, it's an overview of the presentation, and it will give you a, an idea of what we're going to be talking about. So, I talked about um, a good finish starts with surface preparation. We're going to go over to the uh, lathe now. Uh, I've got on, on the lathe a piece I've turned. And you can see, possibly, if the lights are, light is raking over it, some dimples or places where my gouge just didn't quite go smoothly. I also measure with a caliper, and the caliper made some groove lines. Um, and all of that it needs to get sanded out. So how do I do that? I, I use a random orbit sander. And I had my sandpaper here. Honest, it really was here. And I was all set up. Oh, here it is. So again, depending on depending on uh, how much you have to uh, improve your surface from your turning. Uh, some people start at 80. I think I can start this one around 120. And it's pretty straightforward. I have my, I have my random orbits. Uh, and I get my sandpaper from Vince's Wooden Wonders. Uh, it's got a plastic backing on it. You can use this stuff wet or dry, too, um, if you'd like. Thank you. Um, and here we go. So you want to turn fast, right? When you're when you're when you're cutting your, with your gauge, your gouge. When you're sanding, you want to turn slow. So turn less than 500, preferably, you know, down in the four 300 range. Why? Because a couple things. This is Velcro. It has plastic. And what happens when friction happens? You get heat. And when you get heat, plastic melts, and you destroy your sanding pad and end up having to buy a new one. 
uh, sooner than you thought. Also, your uh, grit on your sanding paper will last longer. If you're sanding by hand, it's hot. <laughs> so you don't want to raise blisters. Are we awake tonight? Yeah. All right. You know what? <laughs> you need a joke. Okay, tell you what. I used to shave my head. I used to buzz it right down, and then I decided to grow it out, and I discovered I was bald. Come on, you guys. You are tired. <laughs> you are tired. I gave my brother a birthday card that said, hair doesn't fall out. It just goes underground and comes, comes out your ears. <laughs> so that's where that came from. <laughs> so, okay, are we awake yet? All right. Okay, so let's do some sanding. And I have this hooked up to my little uh, vacuum. So here we go. Of course, I would be wearing my mask, but I want to talk to you, so. Uh, on this piece, okay, feels pretty good. Uh, on this piece, I did a demo yesterday up in, uh, up in the Straits Club, and this is the piece I I uh, demonstrated with. It doesn't have this collar, so I was able to sand the whole thing with, with just my machine here. But on this one, because I have this neck, I'm going to have to do some uh, hand sanding. Now, the problem, why don't I do hand sanding entirely? Well, you, you know when you take a pretty heavy grit and you put it on there, you get the circular lines. With the random orbit sander, that doesn't occur, and you get a, a pretty good sand. Uh, however, like I said, I'm going to have to sand this by hand. And I use these little, uh, uh, sometimes you use wood. The, I bought these little things, and they're backers for your sandpaper. I don't think I need the 80 grit. Let's go with this one. And so, oops, come on. So I've got this little groove here that I want to respect and make sure I get it nicely. And then when you do when you do hand sand, keep keep it moving. Don't just hold it in one place. Otherwise, you'll get those a lot of those grooves that you want, want to get away from. Is that your lathe? It just feels, okay. All right, so <laughs> let me show you how to drop your sanding discs. Again, I get these from Vince's, and they're, they're very high-quality uh, sanding discs. Why? Uh, they're plastic-backed. Uh, they put the uh, grit on electrostatically, so instead of having the grit lay on the paper randomly, it's all vertical, so you get a really sharp teeth all the way around, and they're very consistent. If you get cheap sandpaper, the quality is going to vary a great deal because, uh, let me see if I can explain this to you real quickly. Uh, they put them through sieves to get the different great grits. And you want, like say, you're shooting for 80 grit, you want to get your 80 grit here. Uh, the bigger grits are over here, you know, 40, 60. Over here, the 120, and so on. Cheap sandpaper, you're going to get a broader range of grits 
mixed in because they don't do as good a job uh, sifting it out. The cheap, uh, more uh, expensive sandpaper, you're going to get more of the grit, uh, more consistent grit quality. Okay. So it's worth it. Okay, so I've got 180 on this. Once you've got your surface cleaned up with your heavier grits, you don't need to spend quite as much time sanding with the progressive uh, grits. 120 next. And in the interest of time, I'm just going to skip this for now, uh, the hand sanding here. Three twenty, and I sand to four hundred on wood. That's pretty decent. Okay, what do I do with my cookie? Oh, right. So what do you do with the inside? I like to sand the inside of my, my pieces. And so I use a uh, hemostat with a wad of uh, uh, just a rag on it, just a piece of rag wrapped around a piece of sandpaper. Now, you, you, depending on the angle of the interior surface that you're going to sand is how you adjust your, your sandpaper on here. So, turn it on again and in we go. Okay, I've done this top edge. I'm going to shift the angle so I can get this side. And this really wears out the sandpaper fast. So you can go through a lot of it really fast. And on the inside, I, you know, I go down to maybe 120 because you're not, I'm not going to be putting a, a lacquer surface on it. And it's just you guys that like to put your fingers in wood turnings <laughs> that we want to impress. So, right? Uh, so uh, just, I just sand to that level. If you want to, you can you know, throw paint or a, or a finish in there if you'd like. Uh, how many of you get frustrated by that little nub at the bottom after your and your holoforms? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what do I do about that? Is <clears throat> I take this little guy and I like this battery-operated uh, grill because I don't have the cord to to uh, get in my way and. Depending on how deep your uh, 
your hollow form is, uh, you can go quite deep with this particular extension. Um, I have I have a very heavy grit, uh, and again, somebody tell me what uh, what this is, the name, where they twist on. What's that? Power lock. Thank you. I always forget that. <laughs> All right, um, and you just stick it down in there. Turn on your and it's gone. <laughs>